This week's episode is a couple days late, and that's hopefully made up for by the fact that you're getting a twofer this time in that we're talking about a controller and a game. And as you already know from the title and thumbnail, the game is Bloody Wolf for the TurboGrafx-16 and PC Engine, and the controller is the Avenue Pad 3, which I... Originally, I was going to make a whole separate video about the Avenue Pad 3, and I just decided... That doesn't seem very interesting, but, um, you know, I, my opinion of the controller is that if you're only going to have one PC engine controller, that's the one you should have. And so I wanted to explain why. So, uh, first, just to give a little bit of backstory about NEC Avenue and sort of how this controller came about, NEC Avenue is, or was rather, uh, one subdivision of NEC that focused on mostly on software development. Later, they got into music publishing, so I don't understand how all that works. But sort of in the heyday of the PC Engine, NEC Avenue mostly uh, like converted other people's arcade games for release uh, on the PC Engine. So like from Sega, they converted uh, Fantasy Zone. Uh, I've got a list over here. Outrun, Gain Ground for the PC Engine CD, which is an awesome game. From Capcom, they did like sidearms, uh, the Ghouls and Ghosts port on the Super Graphics. That was uh, NEC Avenue, Cheeky Cheeky Boys. From uh, Taito, they did a bunch. I think all of the Darius games on the PC Engine, uh, whether Hue Card or CD, were uh, NEC Avenue releases. They did Rainbow Islands. They did uh, Space Invaders. Then from Toa Plan. They did uh, Hellfire S, which I don't know. I like Hellfire on the Genesis and Hellfire S on the PC Engine. I can't really pick a favorite, but NEC Avenue did the PC Engine CD version. Uh, they also did Dyson Poo, which is uh, what we got in the West as Twin Hawk. And then what was that other game I've written over? Yeah, Horror Story, which was not a shooter, a non-shooter Toa Plan game. Uh, imagine that. And then um, NEC Avenue did also develop some original games and uh, probably the most noteworthy, uh, especially for us in the West where we're not playing Japanese games that really require working knowledge of Japanese, they did a download and download too. And those were games that were, you know, specifically developed for, uh, for the PC engine. So that's just to give you kind of an idea of who NEC Avenue were because that kind of lays the groundwork for why they were coming out with these uh, special controllers. So, and I say that in plural because there were two. So I'm going to switch the uh, camera view over here. And so down here, we've got the Avenue Pad 3, which is what we're talking about today. And uh, the, the cord is kind of going off the screen over here because it's actually plugged into my PC engine since we're going to use it today. And then over here is the other controller they're famous for, which is the Avenue Pad 6. And uh, part of the reason I wanted to talk about that is I feel like people that are really into the PC Engine, they already know about the Avenue Pad 3. But like when I was getting in uh, into the system, when I got my Duo R, you know, like I knew I wanted to play the PC Engine port of Street Fighter 2, because so many people say how great it is. But, uh, you know, I didn't really know, you know, so I knew I needed a six button controller and, you know, there was the official six button controller, which I can't remember what its exact name is, but it, uh, it came out at some point, you know, NEC released it. And then later when, uh, the duo RX became, you know, their flagship system, they bundled that controller. Uh, I think it's called the arcade pad. Six. I think that's the name of that controller. Anyway, that controller sucks, so I don't want that. So, you know, really your only two options for a six-button controller are either the Avenue Pad 6 or the Hori Fighting Commander, which uh, I've never been able to play with a Hori Fighting Commander, but Hori makes great controllers, so I have no doubt that that controller is awesome. But I seem to remember, you know, I'd be reading about these controllers and people would be talking about the Avenue Pad 3 and saying, oh, well, you know, that controller is really just for playing 
Forgotten Worlds, which, uh, again, you know, people that are hardcore PC Engine fans know that's not the case. But, uh, you know, I think there might be sort of this narrative floating around among people that are not as knowledgeable that like, oh, that's just like the Forgotten Worlds controller and uh, nothing could be further from the truth. So I ended up downloading a ton, uh, thanks to Gaming Alexandria, uh, downloading a bunch of scans of uh, PC Engine magazines. And uh, I actually, I featured a couple of these magazines on an episode of the show like a few years ago now. I don't remember when it was. Uh, the magazine's called Gekon PC Engine, which just means PC Engine Monthly. And I I read through, you know, flipped through every issue from like November of 89 up to like halfway through 1992, just uh, looking for information about this controller to figure out like exactly when it came out and, and looking for ads about it and stuff like that. And uh, so... Here's what I found, anyway. Uh, so the the controller was first mentioned in the January '91 issue of PC Engine Monthly. If you remember, if you watched that video I did flipping through those magazines, they always had the section in the middle that was like black and white for I guess because they weren't really showing screenshots and whatnot. Maybe they were trying to save money, but you know there was a little section in there that uh, was it was like PC Engine news and it was like little little blurbs and there was a little blurb in there uh showing the avenue pad three so that was its first mention in the magazine but then the very next month so february of 91 nec avenue took out this full page ad for just for the avenue pad three and it was like this comic style like a comic strip ad that um i just took that image of the of the full ad and uploaded it to google translate just to try to figure out what was going on and, you know, Google Translate kind of struggles with stuff, but sort of the general gist was, uh, you know, this guy's really frustrated. He can't beat some boss in a game and somebody else is telling him, like, dude, you have to get an NEC Avenue Pad 3 and explaining why. Like, oh, this neighbor kid got one. Now he's really good at video games. You know, you can and he, and he explains what you can do uh, with the controller, which uh, we'll talk about. Actually, right now, it makes more sense to talk about it right now. Um, so here's the controller. So it's a, it's a three button controller. Obviously it's the Avenue pad three, but it differs in the way it works from the Avenue pad six. So this is a six button controller, but buttons three, four, five, and six are, uh, are encoded as buttons three, four, five, and six in the multiplexer in the controller. So, um, you know, games that are, that are programmed to see those buttons can use this controller, but other games just, you, you can't assign anything else to these buttons. Like if you're playing a game that doesn't use, uh, the, the six button controller, you can flip the mode button on here to change it into a two button controller and still use it for that. But, uh, the Avenue pad three, this button three is not the same as this button three. This is not even really button three. This button is either select or run, and you choose which of those two things it is with uh, with this switch over here. And um, I'll talk about it uh, when I'm done sort of with this section of the video, but there's a bunch of different games that make use of, of uh, either the select button or the run button as a third action button. And uh, so having a controller like this where you can assign either of those buttons to button three, I think just makes the games... Uh, a little bit more playable. So uh, anyway, uh, February and March uh, of 91, there were these full page ads in PC Engine Monthly. It was the same ad. And then uh, just as an interesting aside, also that year, uh, another three button controller came on the market from this company called Sir Day Wave. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I, I tried to look up who they were and I didn't really see anything interesting, but they came out with this controller called the Blaster. And it came out for the PC Engine, the Mega Drive, the MSX, and the X68000. I've never handled any of these controllers. From what I saw online, they're well regarded. So uh, in the pictures, to me, they look kind of cheap. But again, I've never held one. So what can I say? But people seem to like them. But the PC Engine version of the Blaster controller works the same way 
as the avenue pad three. You you have a switch that you can assign button three to either uh, select or run. You can have a uh, variable speed turbo on all the switches or all the buttons rather. Uh, so, so that's nice. So those ads also were in uh, various 1991 issues of PC Engine Monthly. And um, then in uh, September of 91, a new ad showed up for uh, for the Avenue Pad 3. And that one was kind of cool because down in the corner, it showed uh, it was Final Soldier and uh, Final Match Tennis. And then underneath it was this little blurb kind of mentioning uh, like in Final Soldier, you use the select button to change your speed. And so it mentioned that. And then in Final Match Tennis, you use, I think it's the run button uh, to hit like a lob. Final Match Tennis, of course, being a tennis game. Uh, if you want to like hit like a lob shot instead of a normal shot, use the run button. And you can imagine it would be a lot nicer to use a uh, third action button instead. And uh, in all the ads I just mentioned, they said the price. I should have mentioned that. The price was like 2,980 yen, which uh, I went and looked at, at like what was the exchange rate between uh, dollars and yen in 1991. And that would have been like between 22 and $23 US if what I looked at uh, was correct. But anyway, um, then in 1992, Forgotten Worlds came out. I think it was the February and March issues of PC Engine Monthly. They had uh, their new game special section, which we looked at when I did those flick throughs where uh, I mean, it was kind of like the previews in like EGM or GamePro or or Nintendo Power. It it would kind of go through and show you the different levels and whatnot. And I guess they thought that Forgotten Worlds was enough of a big deal that it got featured in back-to-back issues. Like, here's the first however many levels in this issue, and then uh, in the next issue, here's, like, the rest of the game. And uh, it was around that time there was, like, a full-page ad in the magazine for Forgotten Worlds showing the uh, Avenue Pad 3 because they came out, like, as a bundle. Like, if you bought Forgotten Worlds, it came bundled with, uh, with the Avenue Pad 3. I don't remember off the top of my head if the ad had the price on it or not, because usually PC Engine games are about uh, 6,000 yen. So I wonder, you would think it would have been more since it was coming with a controller, but um, but who knows? So my point in saying all that is just that the Avenue Pad 3 was out for like over a year uh, because I think Forgotten Worlds came out on like March 27th, according to uh, the ad that I saw. So the controller had been out for over a year before Forgotten Worlds came out. So like... It, it's not a Forgotten Worlds controller. It's just that Forgotten Worlds required you to use the controller, so they bundled them together. But uh, there are a ton of games that that use the Avenue Pad 3. Don't require it, but they're games that use either select or run as a third action button. And so if you have an Avenue Pad 3, as I said, I think it just makes the games a little bit more playable. And uh, I wrote down kind of a... This is not an exhaustive list, but I wrote down a partial list. Uh, Air Zonk, you uh, you use the rear thrusters to shoot enemies behind you. Dracula X, uh, you uh, that's the item crush, is mapped to, I think it was select. Uh, I already mentioned Final Match Tennis, uh, if you want to lob the ball. Golden Axe, to use your uh, magic, you have to use the, the select button. Uh, John Madden Football, which probably most people aren't going to play John Madden Football, uh, on the PC Engine or Turbo Graphics anymore, but I thought it was a cool game. I made a video about it a very, very long time ago. Legendary Axe 2, you use uh, one of the two, I forgot which button, to uh, throw bombs. Uh, Ninja Spirit, uh, that's how you change weapons. And uh, Silent Debuggers, that's how you use your secondary weapon. And in addition to all those, there are a bunch of shooters on the PC Engine that use the select button to adjust your speed, including I think the entire Soldier series, but a bunch of others as well. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna list them all off because it doesn't really matter. And um, and yeah, oh, and and so I did. I, I got out just a regular PC Engine controller, just sort of for a, a size comparison. So move this out of the way for a second. So you can see that uh, the Avenue Pad Three is I don't know maybe like at most a half an inch wider and uh, just a little, little bit taller. So, you know, if you're someone like me that has hands that are a little bit uh, larger than, than average, it's also just more comfortable to hold 
quite frankly, not that there's anything wrong with a regular PC Engine uh, controller. And, uh, oh, another thing. So here you've got the same turbo switches that you have on a normal controller. And then here's the turbo switch for uh, button three, but it's a little bit different. I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but uh, you have off, high, and hold. And if you so if you put it all the way up on hold, you don't have to push the button down. It, it just constantly is uh, like rapidly pushing whichever of the whichever of these two buttons you have mapped to it. And they kind of advertise that as being like for slow motion. We had the same thing here on on the NES. Usually that kind of stuff didn't work, but I just wanted to point that out anyway. And uh, yeah. Oh, and then so here's the Avenue Pad Six uh, that we talked about just a little bit. It's kind of weird in my mind. The Avenue Pad Six is bigger, but if you overlay them, it it really actually isn't isn't bigger. It just somehow it seems bigger. But uh, uh, you know, I've had my Avenue Pad Six for uh, for a very long time, just because, like I said, when I got into the PC Engine, you know, from what I read online, it made me feel like, oh, I need to get that, uh, mostly so I could play Street Fighter Two, like I said. But uh, there are other games that use the Avenue Pad 6. And uh, those would include like Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury 2, Fatal Fury Special, uh, World Heroes 2. And um, maybe I mean, if you're not into fighting games, you might think, well, I don't really need one. The only other game is uh, East 4. So uh, which I know that game only came out in Japan, but there is a fan translation uh, of East 4. So. Uh, if you want to play that and have six buttons available, then you know you get something like this. But if you're only going to get like one contr other controller for your PC engine, like a hundred percent, you should get the Avenue Pad Three. In fact, if if you have an Avenue Pad Three, you don't even really need a regular PC engine controller anymore. So that's why I was trying to say, like, you know, it's kind of the last or only PC engine controller that you really need, where I think it's offering something above what you get with a regular controller. Cause I, you know, especially, you know, when you're playing like shooters and you have to reach your, your, you know, you know, you're like this, right. And well, if I use this one, you know, you're playing the game and, and you're like, Oh, I want to change. I want to go faster. You have to reach your thumb way over here. And it, it's just awkward. And you know, you're kind of risking getting killed or whatever. So I don't like it even for that. But again, there's a bunch of other games. Like I said, non-exhaustive list that, uh, that I read off of games that use one of those two buttons as a as a third action button. So uh, was there anything else I wanted to say about that? Um, I don't think so. Uh, but that gets us to uh, the game we're playing today, and that is Bloody Wolf. And uh, I know I talked a little bit about Bloody Wolf when I did that uh, TurboGrafx-16 Next 10 video, but, um, I mean, I don't remember too much of what I said. The main thing I remember saying about it is, you know, there's sort of this narrative online that Bloody Wolf is like the TurboGrafx-16's version of like Contra. Like I've seen people call it like a Contra clone or a Contra ripoff. And it this game really is nothing like Contra. So uh, it's it's got a lot more in common with a game like Rambo 3 or something for the Genesis or, you know, like Commando, maybe even a little bit like Akari Warriors, although not quite, uh, as we'll see here in just a second. Um, but the reason I don't need this anymore. Uh, the reason that I'm pairing this game with the Avenue pad three is that bloody wolf is another game that uses, uh, in this case, it's the run button as a third action button. Cause that's how you throw grenades. And I mean, how awkward is that? You know, you're playing the game, you have to keep hitting the run button to throw. Well, it's throw grenades or actually as a secondary, uh, weapon, as you'll see in a minute, cause you can pick up. Uh, there's grenades and then there's like more powerful grenades, but then there's also a flamethrower that gets mapped to the run button. So it's just way better if uh, if you have an Avenue Pad 3. So anyway, that's why I chose to talk about this controller uh, in the same episode as uh, as Bloody Wolf. So that all being said, let's play some Bloody Wolf. So I have to turn up the game audio a little bit. And uh, we are playing today on a, a, a real PC engine. As you may have seen, uh, I posted a picture a few days ago on, um, I don't know, it was on Instagram. I don't remember if I had it on uh, Twitter or not. 
Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so uh, we're playing on a PC engine, and uh, uh, as you can see here, this is the menu for uh, for the EverDrive uh, uh, because this PC engine is not region modded. So even though I have a copy of Bloody Wolf, I can't play it on this system, and it was just easier to bring this system down rather uh, than my Duo R, which uh, which is region modded. So okay. Anyway, uh, all that. I don't know. We're done. And uh, you can check out the uh, title screen here. Pretty cool graphics. And uh, I mean, I don't know. The PC Engine Turbo Graphics just has uh, good music in general. But uh, this game is no exception. So uh, so you can choose. You have two players that you can choose between. Uh, what is it? It's uh, Eagle, and I forgot the other guy's name. But uh, Snake, I think. I think it's Eagle and Snake. And uh, you can put in... It's kind of funny. If you put in a code name, but if you just fill it up with A's, it changes his name to Eagle. So... So, Shades of Bad Dudes, our mission is to kidnap the president who's been kidnapped by the enemy. And go. All right. So, uh, you got your jump button, and then uh, the number two button is uh, your machine gun, at least to start out with. And I've got the turbo turned on uh, there, because why wouldn't you? And then, you know, there's lots of, like, little doors and stuff you can go into. There's, um, there's trucks where you can... You can go into the back of the truck. So now you see there, we just picked up a shotgun. And then we can go save this hostage over here who tells us there are many hostages. And you say, okay. I don't know. So then we can head out of here. Oh, I didn't mention actually. Uh, so this is actually uh, a home conversion of an, an arcade game, a Data East arcade game. And... Um, I didn't. I haven't played the arcade game, but I watched a playthrough of it on YouTube, and I have to say that uh, this is actually a pretty faithful uh, conversion. In some ways, it's actually a little bit better. So we save this hostage. He has a key in his pocket, and I can use it. So you say thanks. And you see, I already got hit because I got run over by that guy in the motorcycle, but uh, that's okay. Shoot that guy. Oh, yeah, you can't walk in this one. So now we, so we kill that guy, so now you can get on the motorcycle. And you always want to do that, because you're kind of invincible while you're on the motorcycle. Like, the motorcycle can take damage, but you can't. But you see up at the top there, now you have uh, fuel. And um, your fuel runs out uh, as you ride the motorcycle, but it will also get depleted if you get hit. So... And then now over here, here's this crate with the lock on it. But remember, we got the key from the hostage that we rescued. And just before I open it real quick, this is like the thing I swear that this game is the most known for is uh, muscle emphasis tablets, which I mean, obviously it's steroids, but like you ask anybody, you know, who's a retro gamer about Bloody Wolf and it's like, oh, it's that game with the muscle emphasis pills. So... Uh, what that does, see now our life bar has four segments instead of three. And then you see up here, you've got another motorcycle. So anytime you have a chance to like get off your motorcycle and get a, on a new one, you want to do that because now we have one that has full fuel. Uh, you can also just run dudes over, uh, when you're on the motorcycle. So that's nice. So you can just run them, run them over there. And then we gotta jump off, cause, yeah. So yeah, that's the thing. When it runs out of gas, it starts flashing, because uh, it's gonna blow up. And then you have to hit the run button, or in our case, the three button, to jump off. And then we can go back here and uh, get some power ups. That is uh, the flamethrower, which I mentioned. So flamethrower temporarily replaces the grenades. See, so now I have a flamethrower, but I still have my shotgun. 
Uh, both of those are limited ammo, though. So once the flamethrower runs out, it'll go back to grenades. And once the shotgun runs out, it goes back to um, machine gun. And then now we just picked up body armor. So that just basically means we can take a few more hits. And you see that it shows that stuff up on the top right. There's uh, your inventory. And uh, you start off with the knife, but then you see that we got the key and then now the body armor. Can't go in there. Some of the doors you just can't go into for whatever reason. Shoot that guy from. Uh, if you get hit with a grenade uh, while you're riding the motorcycle, like that's it. That's immediately it for the motorcycle. So you don't really want to risk getting hit with a grenade, although at this point we're almost out of gas anyway, so probably doesn't really matter too much. All right, now we get to a, a mini boss. This is Shotgun Man. Are you making all that racket? Yeah, what of it? That's very. That's a very 80s thing to say. Uh, you'll make a nice target for this gun. So all you have to do really here is just uh, stay out of his uh, the spread of his uh, shotgun blast there. And then uh, these guys with uh, body armor show up. And those you cannot shoot, but you can stab them with your knife or you can hit them with the flamethrower. There you go. All right, so now our shotgun's gone because we ran out of ammo, so we have our machine gun back. And you see, you, you can't shoot up, so you just have to climb the ladder stab him. What's this guy got for us? Uh, the president's plane crash landed eight miles north of here. Okay. So then we got now you can be on the motorcycle up here, so that's kind of cool, and then you just sort of jump. Uh, and then if we jump off here... We can get whatever's in this crate, which is a bazooka, so that's handy. Uh, I could have gotten back on the motorcycle, but I screwed up, so that's my fault. Uh, and then that's it for this area, because then we climb up here and then go out here. So you can see now it's going to switch over to scrolling uh, vertically. And then we can go in the back of this truck. Kind of like uh, Metal Gear. And uh, now here we get pick up medicine and that will completely refill your health. Of course, we're only missing one life bar, so that's not bad. And then uh, we have to climb this fence. And you see we come up to this river and uh, this is the stage one boss battle. And, you know, it has, like, this spread shot that it sends towards you, but, like, it, I feel like, for the most part, if you just stay still, they all miss you. But then, see, he submerges, and now he's going to shoot torpedoes to knock out some of the platform you're on. So you just got to get out of the way. Um, but we've already got his health a third of the way down. And then just by standing here doing this, we'll get his health another third of the way down. And then you just do the same thing. He submerges again. He's going to shoot some more torpedoes at us. And that's it. So. Oh, man. There we go. All right. We got we got shot because it's down in the little island, but whatever. We killed him. And that's it. That's the end of stage one. This job is tough. Let's go to the jungle. Oh, come on. Where the res, the president. It's hard. I'm trying to do the voice, but where the president's plane went down, whatever. Uh, check out that's some sweet parallax scrolling with the clouds there. 
that, that helicopter seen some stuff. And oh, I really like the music uh, in this uh, this level. I'm getting some mileage out of that flamethrower. All right, let me go in here, kill that guy. Use your knife on the armored soldiers. Yes, we figured that out already. Uh, so that gives us back grenades. Where so now we don't have our flamethrower anymore. Then if we break this one open. Now you get powerful grenades, but we only have 10. Uh, that thing I just killed, it looks like a UFO. They, they send out like, they shoot in all directions, but they also have some kind of weird laser beam thing. So you don't really want to be messing around with those things. So, oh, and the, the more powerful grenades, by the way, uh, they just kill like enemies in a much larger radius. So now we gotta climb this tree and talk to this guy. Thank you. And then he says, you can use my fins. So now watch, those are gonna show up in uh, the inventory. Well, in a second. Okay, thanks. Now we've got fins. Um, you know, like for swimming. We go in here, no. Ah, got hit. I got hit again. Let me go in here. Talk to this dude. Uh, who tells you uh, the president was moved to the base's headquarters. So now we got to keep going. So now we go vertical again. Hey, come on. Oh, this guy. This guy's a little bit tricky, but once you figure out how he kind of operates, he's not too bad. There we go. So uh, again, that's a uh, uh, mini boss though. So now we still have to go across uh, the water here. And then this guy, Oh, what happens? He's supposed to drop a power-up. I don't know what happened. Usually that guy drops a power-up where you end up getting like 99 grenades. I don't know what... I don't know why we didn't get him. Ah, alright, so... Oh, I didn't mention this. So you only get one life and then it's game over. But you get unlimited continue, so it kind of doesn't really matter that much. This guy still pops up, but now you're definitely not getting the uh, the power up. I don't think. Yeah. But that's all right. So, uh, like I said, you get unlimited continues, uh, which is for some reason that's like a thing on Turbo Graphics games. Um, you know, like uh, Keith Courage was the same way. But uh, you can see the only penalty you kind of take for that is now my muscle emphasis tablets are are no longer in effect. So now I'm back to just having uh, three health bars. And then we got the shotgun. I believe uh, this is the level two boss. Which, as you can see, I mean, not not really too much of a big deal. I mean, once you figure out their pattern, yeah. Yeah. 
So I feel like the, in, like in this case, the mini boss or the half halfway boss was tougher than the real boss. All right, now we got all right. We got the president in the enemy camp. He's a troublemaker. I don't know if that's like a bad translation or something. What a weird thing to say. So now we're into level three here. Come on. Well, got powerful grenades back, which is helpful. And this is kind of a weird level because you see, like now you're you're sort of up in the mountains, but there's all these like uh, pits that you can fall through now. There's these log. I don't know. This this, this level is kind of strange, but I mean, I don't mind it. But and then over here, you want to check because uh, there are some of these caves that you can go inside. Now we got a bazooka. Ah, now we get some muscle emphasis tablets back, so you can get up to six uh, life segments. So. Would have been nice if we could have kept all of those. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, they tell you now that you need a key to open the lock boxes. So, but I forgot which ones you can go into, but there's all these caves, so you kind of want to go up to each one. You want to make sure you get rid of this thing. Really, man? Yeah. And I'm, I mean, you know, if you're really good at this game, probably you remember what's in all these things, but I don't remember. But, I mean, shotgun and flamethrower, uh, that's a good combo in my opinion. See, and now it switches so that now we're going down. Medicine, but we didn't need it, so not super helpful. Watch out for bridges. You'll die if you fall. Well, seems kind of obvious, but okay. This guy kind of sucks. For some reason, you just have to jump when his, like, when his weapon is powering up. There you go. We killed him. So it's still not that difficult, but I remember I couldn't figure out, like, he's only uh, vulnerable 
after he jumps and he's standing there, like as soon as he like crouches down and starts uh, charging up his weapon, he's invincible. And I didn't really figure that out. So, uh, all right, level four. So we're kind of breaking the rule uh, for weekend rental going past uh, three levels. But so here you're just climbing this wall. Uh, you can't shoot, but you just keep climbing and uh, no one's going to get you anyway. So. Get in here and see if there's any goodies. Thank goodness we still have a flamethrower to kill all those guys. What do we got? Oh, more muscle emphasis tablets. So now we're going to get a fifth health bar and we get our health refilled. So that's nice. And then all those guys are gone. So that's also nice. Shotgun, bazooka, I would have rather have had the shotgun. Oh, and we just lost the flamethrower, so that's not good. Um, and we can save all these guys. Uh, you just get points. I mean, they're giving you these tips like, oh, here's where the president is being held, but like, it doesn't, this game is linear, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know about the music for this level either. I guess if you shoot the motorcycle guys with a bazooka, you don't get the motorcycle anymore, which makes sense. Sorry, I'm being quiet, but I just don't have anything to say, really. Oh, we're out of grenades. That sucks. I'm a bloody wolf. Oh, yeah, so you're... the. The game is Bloody Wolf because, like, you're from this commando unit called the Bloody Wolves or something. So, I'm Bloody Wolf. I came to rescue the president. The boss says, you're crazy. And then he, he throws a boomerang at you that, like, somehow breaks your weapons. And he says, now your weapons are useless. Uh, and you're saying, oh, boomerang can do that? That was news to me as well. Um, you're a dead man, and... Uh, uh, you must be kidding, I can kill you using only my knife. So now you have to kill him using only your knife. That's funny, I would like to see that. Okay. Uh, game over. This might be tough. I don't know. I'm not going to keep the video dragging on if I can't beat this guy, but... Um...
Ah, I got too close. We're getting there. Boomerang, rather. Because he's hitting me in the air while I'm uh, jumping to get away from his whatever charge weapon that is, you know. I just did it again. Yeah. Hmm. guy's definitely tougher than the rest of the bosses in this game. This is not the final boss, by the way, although I think in the uh, in the arcade game it might be. I think I just gotta quit jumping around like an idiot, see? had him. All right, we're, we're figuring stuff out here, though. Oh, man. Yeah. Getting close. I don't feel like I'm standing in the same spot as him, but I think this uh, section of the game has some questionable hit detection. Finally. Not bad. I'll get you next time. Let me go up here and uh, save the president. 
Who are you? Why are you asking me that? I just saved your life. Uh, I'm here to rescue you. Okay. I'll trust you. Tell me what to do. Thank you, sir. Please follow me. So now you have to, like, drag this guy with you and, like, fight your way back out of the level. slowdown going on. Come on, President. Walk faster. Can we go in here? No. Oh, we died. Alright. Seems like just booking it is what works the best. We have grenades. Why am I not using those? scene. That's our chopper. And here comes the chopper. All right. You're safe, Mr. President. Uh, so are the hostages we rescued. That's nice. Uh, we didn't expect this many. There's only room for one more. So like the anthrax song. Uh, and say Eagle, what? Only one? Uh, sorry, we're fully loaded. Uh, and then Eagle's telling uh, the president, you get in the chopper, uh, which seems kind of obvious. And then, of course, the president showing a little bit of concern. How will you get back? Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. And, uh, yeah, get going. So, uh, president gets on the chopper along with, uh, that guy and they leave you there because there's no room. So now you have to switch over to uh, playing as Snake. And then this guy's back. This guy's real creepy looking, by the way. Uh, so now you've rescued the president, but now you have to play as Snake and you have to go rescue Eagle. More parallax scrolling. And uh, I think we're not going to play. This level's kind of, I don't know. You have to go through here, uh, Eagle, I hope you're safe. Um, you have to go through here and like rescue all these hostages and whatnot, but really good music. So actually, we'll play a little while just for the music. And so, you know, if you had picked uh, to play a snake at the beginning of the game, you know, it, you just would end up having to uh, rescue Eagle instead or rescue Snake instead, playing as Eagle, so. Shotgun, flamethrower, fins, all right. So if you saw when we rescued that last hostage, it said like 11 remaining or something. So like you have to, um, uh, you have to rescue all the hostages in this level, uh, to finish the level. And then around here somewhere, I forgot where, there it is. There's a little secret there, this koala. See, and so that, picking up that koala, now we have a full life bar and you have uh, uh, 
a full inventory, and I forgot what that cross even does. And I mean, I don't... I don't remember where all the hostages are, but I mean, basically this whole level is just, you have to walk around the whole level uh, until you find all the hostages. But yeah, you see that thing was like firing off that weird laser beam thing, so like, you don't want to be messing around with that, so you got to kill those guys. So now nine remaining. I'm just going over here to check through all the trees. Yeah, there's another one. quite remember what flash bombs do. I think they just like um like paralyze the enemies temporarily. Is this the one we already went into? No. Knife killer, I'll slice you to ribbons. half of our life doing that, but got three hostages. All right. And again, they're giving you directions to where they might be holding Eagle, but the game's linear, so it doesn't matter. And then we got medicine, so that filled our health back up from uh, dealing with this uh, knife killer guy, so that's good. this way. I know there's more hostages all the way down at the bottom of the screen. We didn't go in here, did we? Or was this where that knife killer guy was? No, it's not. <gasps> oh, I shot the hostage. I don't know if this game has, like, extra hostages. And I think we have to go across the river over here. Oh, by the way, with the, um, with the fins, you can kind of go underwater. So if there's, like, too many dudes up your butt. That's the end of stage five, so no boss. You just have to uh, uh, rescue all the hostages, as I said. Still looking for uh, Eagle here. Now we're 
Some place with iron rich soil. There we go. So, you know, here's a bunch of stuff that uh, we don't need because we already got that koala bear. Well, I'll take a shotgun. I wish it gave you the option of not, uh, like anything you get out of a crate automatically chain, uh, replaces whatever weapon you have. And I mean, that kind of sucks because maybe you don't want it. So like, I'm not gonna open those last two crates because I got a shotgun and a flamethrower, which to me are the two best weapons. So you're not controlling the raft here at all. It's like kind of on autopilot. Got a key, which we don't need. Oh, medicine, I'll take that, though. Oh, looks we gotta hop up here. And uh, I think, I mean, whatever happens here, I think we're gonna kinda go ahead and stop playing, because... Um, I think this video is getting kind of long. Ah, uh, we died. Now we're going to lose all of our uh, power-ups there. So that kind of sucks. Well, whatever. Uh, I mean, I think that uh, that's enough of that. We played that game quite a bit. So, uh, anyway, uh, that is glare, no glare, bloody wolf for the turbo graphic 16 and PC engine, uh, highly recommend that game has nothing whatsoever to do with Contra as I think you would agree. I mean, I get the idea that the two main characters maybe look kind of like the dudes from Contra, but like, other than that, like the two games just have nothing to do with each other. So, uh, kind of a pet peeve of mine when people who don't know what they're talking about try to say that, oh, that's Contra for the TurboGrafx-16. But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Weekend Rental. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.